Yeah, hello, everybody. First, I'd like to say uh, thank you uh, to Viviana and Saul for, for uh, inviting me and, and having me as a guest. It's been uh, a very pleasure uh, to do so. Uh, I have only half an hour, so I will speak very quickly and there will be no jokes. And uh, let's, let's begin. Um, this before. Um, let's, let's start with the... With, um, what you see in the slide is, um, is how uh, students and how normally people look at, uh, at, the, at, uh, at production and designing and, and production and set. Uh, there is a <coughs> the paradigm of, of uh, the industrial of the paradigm of industrialism. There is this uh, uh, designer who is represented as a, as a bulb who he makes a design or she makes a design. Uh, it goes to a producer, a producer produces a product, and the product goes to market. And this is uh, the, the biggest dogma, or the biggest belief of what I call the Church of Industrial Design. This is the, how it is taught and how it is practiced uh, mostly. Uh, and it assumes that um, a, a designer must have a producer. And a uh, producer is somewhere between the, the, the designer and the market. And the consumer is uh, connected, uh, uh, I mean, the, the designer is assuming the consumer is not really in contact with him, and so on. And uh, actually, uh, this, this uh, has a lot to do with the Industrial Revolution and mass production. This is, this is how uh, designers usually conceive uh, what they are doing, and this is how it is taught in uh, design education systems. And, uh, but what happened in the last, I would say, 15 years is that everything has changed. Every creative field that is other than industrial design has uh, gone into a network situation. It is network. Everything that is text or code or music or animation or photography, uh, graphic design, communication, whatever is, is become, has become, um, uh, whatever is in information has become part of a network. And when you look at this, there is a, there's so much uh, creativity going on. There's like a creative party going on. And industrial design or product design is not part of it. And um, not only that, uh, when you... Industrial designer, product designers always uh, wanted to be relevant to this world. They always wanted to be some kind of uh, part of the cutting edge of human uh, society and culture. And when you think about the fact that the the vision or, the, or, the, or where culture is going actually is in the direction of uh, networks and um, internet and industrial design is not there, products are not there. It means that products are actually losing their cultural significance. They're not, they're not important anymore. It doesn't matter. Uh, it, was not, it was not like that uh, 20, 30, 40 years back, but, but it's becoming so. And I'll put it out as a question, you know, um, if, if um, hierarchy uh, and industrial revolution created industrial design, then we are living now in a, in a, in a time of, uh, of change. Everything is changing from hierarchical to, uh, to network. Then what will be the response of, of industrial or product design to this situation? And open design is a um, proposition I am making to, to make this happen, to transform product design from hierarchical, uh, industrial uh, revolution uh, uh, generated mass production scenario into, a, into an information age of networks and, and, and sharing and collaborative and so on. This is the open design, my version. There are a lot of open designs we heard the past two days, a lot of open designs. All are, all are fine. Yes, this is just my version. And uh, it has very few. Um, conditions of what it is. Uh, an open design is, is CAD information, it is published on the internet, usually with a Creative Commons license, and it is produced by CNC machines. That means that uh, you don't have to have production means and you don't invest in tooling. There's no risk, there's no money investment in the production of products. And uh, uh, you can see down there the, the, the kind of schematics for how it works. Um, the, the producer, the CNC manufacturer, is, uh, is becoming a service provider for a designer. There is no longer a, uh, uh, a situation where 
the, the, if the company or the producer is a gatekeeper of creativity. That means that a designer who does open design is completely free uh, uh, creatively. There is uh, uh, an option for full, free, independent creative expression uh, as an open designer. And, and the question I, I'm, I'm starting to ask is, if this is a situation, then what is the potential of open design and what is the aesthetics of open design? What is the connection between the conditions of, of, a, of, of a, a design as a piece of information on the network to its aesthetics? So this is basically my project for I think the last eight years at least. And this is like the vision, you know, how, how we can look. And, and, uh, and uh, open design, with, when, when the design is on the network, it's, it's inclusive. It includes everything and everybody that wants to join in. Uh, it can include universities and governments and CNC and markets and producers and other people and other contributors. And each time an open design is uh, produced, it's just an instance of uh, something that is information going through a, a long uh, creative process. Uh, it's just an instance of, of materializing of, of, a, of a file, let's say, into a product. Um, this is the, I mean, a few years ago when I was talking about open design, this was the vision, but actually this is what is actually happening now. Um, you can read it yourself, I, I think we talked about it the last uh, two days. Uh, on, on, on your right you will see one of the first uh, open design products I did um, when after I came to Berlin. This is an Eclipse light. It, was a, it is still a uh, consumer product. It is sold through um, Movisi, my uh, distributors in Stuttgart. I designed it as an idiot-proof product. It is sold flat and is assembled or bent by the, the consumer or the buyer. I thought it would, uh, I had designed it as an idiot proof uh, product, but uh, every time you design something idiot proof, they make better idiots. And that's sometimes you have a lot of fun. So, anyway, what is an open design uh, product? Well, what does it mean for the product? It is always available, even, even, even if it does not exist. It means that um, first I sell the product, then I go on and actually produce it. Uh, I don't have inventory, I don't have, uh, I don't have uh, costs that are connected to having a product in the world. It's, it's, it's in my computer and it's just produced when, when it is sold. Also, it has this kind of uh, 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 an interesting sensation of being future-proof. That means that um, in 50 years from now, when, uh, or 100 years from now, let's be sure about it, when nobody in this room is alive, including me, uh, but these things are still, will maybe still be uh, somewhere on the network and they could be produced and the production the product that can come out of, of a design will be exactly like it was done today. And another, uh, it, it, when you design something that is uh, open design, the product, you have to understand that it's native to the internet. You don't just take something and, uh, let's say, make a version of it. Uh, or, or you, from the beginning, it has to. Uh, you have to think about something that will live in the internet, and it has to be simple because this is and this is something that. Um, that is uh, unique to, to, to product this, to sorry to open design. Um, if you release uh, a piece of information to be downloaded by other people and changed and manipulated and so on, it must be simple. It must be simple enough for, for, for people to, to, to change and manipulate. Uh, if it's complex, then it stays as it is. You cannot do anything with it. And and what you see here, I mean, it, it's a layer of functionality on the design itself, not the product. The product, in this case, that the football is, is something. Uh, it's it's a, it's an object. But the design itself, this this S line you see, this is uh, has a functionality of being simple and, and, and ready to be uh, transformed and changed and so on and so on. And I'd like to show you something. This is the flat knot football is the first uh, the first product uh, I, I published as an open design. I have a, This is the this is the, the what you get from the uh, laser cutter. Uh, just allow me to put some gloves on because I'm going to bend it. Um, it's made out of uh, one millimeter stainless steel Euro finish uh, uh, metal steel, and uh, it's 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 kind of cheap to make. Uh, you 
put... I don't have hands. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, you can do that. Um, put some stickers here, like uh, felt stickers, so it will not scratch the, the, the table. But basically, it, it's, it's like this. That's it. That's the ball. And, and to make this... I like to use quickly. I like, I, I hate to wait for product. I hate, I, 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 I want to send a file to, to the producer, to the laser cutter, and I want it in three days. I, I cannot wait for things. So sometimes when you're doing industrial design, like proper industrial design, you have to wait three years before you see a chair, and I cannot stand that. I, I like the quickness of it, and, and, and whatever you do, you get results quickly. Um, just to, just to, uh, yeah. Just to show you an example, this is a work I did in 2008. I started to get interested in, in systems, and this is a shelving system. Um, on the principle I call the I call controlled collapse. It's a, basically there is a, this is the design, this part here, and the rest is just straight shelves, and you put them uh, one on top of the other in this manner. And uh, the more the more you put or the, the more weight you put on the system, it becomes uh, uh, more harder, harder actually. And I released it in 2008 uh, to the internet, and people started doing it, uh, and then I started to get uh, users who download it and 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 produce it. Uh, the white one is from Greece, and the, the other one is from uh, United States, and the, the top one, this one, is from. Or yeah, okay, nobody puts anything on it. <laughs> uh, Austrian, and this is from Berlin, and so on, and, and uh, um, yeah, so, uh, but, but on the same, and, and they don't want to change it, this is very interesting. They write me, I don't want to change the designer's design. Uh, they're not designers themselves usually, but they want the original version of the designer, which, which is kind of strange, and, and, and um, I think, yeah, it could take time to somebody who make uh, variations. But uh, in the Institute of Advanced Architecture here in, in, um, in Barcelona, two or three years ago, students did an open design project, and, and some of them were uh, taking uh, my stuff and starting to mess around with it, and, and they starting to enlarge it into architecture uh, because the system works in larger scales. If you scale it up, it can become architecture, and it can be a pavilion, it can be something like uh, for children to play, it can be uh, this, this thing, uh, the, the title was church. So it's, this, this is like an example of, of a potential of, of what an open design can do. And on one side it's a shelving system, and on the other side is architecture, a church or a pavilion and so on. And this all can only happen because it is online, it's on a network, it's CNC produced, and it's, it's, it's uh, under Creative Commons license. It's okay for people to, to mess around with it and research it and develop it. Um, another example, uh, again from the in uh, Institute of Advanced Architecture, is uh, they did a variation on, on, on a table I did. This is a stainless steel table, kind of a big thing, a, a coffee table. Uh, from two millimeter stainless steel. Actually, it's a very strong st structure. You can stand on it. Uh, but when they, uh, when one of the students uh, takes this kind of uh, structure and uh, scales it up and makes it from a from a locally uh, made material with local made uh, local manufacturing, then it becomes a shelter for uh, a quick uh, shelter for for uh, survivors of the Peru. Uh, earthquake. This is what was the, the title of the thing. So, uh, you know, on the one side is like a half functional experimental uh, table that is good for nothing but snorting coke, and on the other side it's it's a it's a shelter for earthquake survivors in Peru. So this this uh, you never know what will happen with your designs. But this is the power of open design. This is this is why I enjoy doing it, and I'm having extremely fun doing these things and researching what it could be and, and what, whatever it is about. And that comes a time for a designer to do a chair. I mean, if you're a designer, there is a time to say, I must do a chair. Right? If I have something to say, you know, a chair is like the holy grail of design. It has a 4,500 year 
of recorded history. It is every advancement in, in, uh, in materials, in technology, uh, social uh, movement, uh, design movement, aesthetic, whatever, whatever, is represented in a chair. I need to do an open design chair. And I'm asking, what, is, what, is, what do I want to say in a chair that it will be open design? And, and first of all, I, I decided it will not be uh, your uh, consumer seating solution. I, I want to make people uh, aware that is, it is something new and something different. I want to make people uh, aware that I am um, trying out an aesthetic that is, um, how should I say, it is experimental. It's, it's, it, it, it is not nice. It's not elevator music. It's rock and roll or punk. Uh, it is dangerous. And uh, this is the hack chair. I was quite inspired by, by hackers. And it became this. I mean, when you bend it, this is what, what, what becomes of, of the chair. It's a one piece. Six millimeter aluminium uh, that I bended by hand, and um, when when I when I did this, it was like yes, I, I I really enjoy doing this, and it takes to bend this chair takes about uh, I don't know how to I'll show you I have it with me. I have I have just uh, one you know you know Vitra does one to six scale models of, of famous uh, modernist uh, contemporary chair or whatever. So I said I can be my own Vitra. This is a one to six scale of, of, of the chair you see here, and basically you get a piece of steel like this, and you bend it. I will show you pretty quickly. You do this, and then you do this, and then, and, and and that's it. And, and this is the chair, you know. <laughs> so so it, it it takes like 20 seconds or 30 seconds to make a, a full size one. And, from, from this situation, you say, hey, this is too good, I, I must do more. And, um, and, and you start exploiting this uh, twist hinge detail. This is an open design detail. This is the technical detail behind all the chairs. Um, for anybody to experiment, uh, I mean, it's, for, I do chairs, somebody else can do the structures or whatever. But this is a, with this kind of uh, detail, you can bend 20 millimeters of steel with your hands. Um, and, and, and it becomes easy. Anyway, so I said I, I need to do some more of this because I enjoy it, enjoy it so much. And I started, uh, this is how my computer looks. If you start doing sketches and, and you realize that everything you do is possible. There is nothing that is not possible. Everything that you do, first of all, there's nobody saying no, like, no, this is an ah, whatever. Ah, but everything is possible. And aesthetically, everything is possible. So you start, you know, this, this kind of urge to do chairs and overwhelms you, you become like a chair freak and, uh, and they become more and more and you, do, you cannot stop and, and, and at the end you say, okay, let's do an exhibition but I cannot produce like 500 chairs and don't have the money, I sponsor everything, I, I pay for my production. Uh, so you choose six, uh, like a collection and this is the recent uploads uh, collection for, that I did uh, in the end of 2010 and uh, six chairs, I will show you this, with the hack chair you saw already the graffiti chair was inspired by German uh, or let's say Berlin uh, graffiti on the wall, kind of uh, edgy and, uh, and kind of uh, graphical looking. And the vague chair that doesn't know exactly what, where it wants to go, it's kind of going all kinds of direction, indecisive and so on. The simple tone is, is my uh, honest attempt to be German, to go with the uh, design formalism all the way and that's what happened. Um, actually, it's the most, uh, it's the most bought it's my best seller in Germany, this chair. The Germans seem to connect to this kind of aesthetic. Um, the Flatfeld, which is the, my, my uh, uh, version of the Riedfeld Red and Blue chair. Uh, this, uh, this is Anker's uh, show yesterday, the Lego side of it. I'm showing the, the, my version of it, or my homage to it. And the Tel Aviv chair, which, which tries to be square, tries to be okay, but it's noisy and not going. In. It's like Tel Aviv. It's like it's like a, a madhouse. Yeah. And, and, and uh, this was my uh, tribute to, to the city I lived in, like 15 years. Um, and when it is uh, at the exhibition itself, uh, when the when the opening happened, the chairs were flat. And during the opening, I did uh, I bent all of them one after the other. There is a Vimeo uh, movie about it. Just you know, uh, put my name in Vimeo, and you you will see it. Um, and it is sold with its uh, with, with, with this cutout thing. I mean, this belongs to this, 
and uh, there is kind of a sensation of you buying a piece of, uh, like a picture of art uh, with a chair that's, that's I, I, it's functional, you can sit on the chair, but usually people who buy these, uh, this chair are usually collectors and so on, who appreciate the, the concept and uh, the visual of it, and they get uh, uh, this this uh, frame uh, with it, and actually the, the producer that cuts the stuff for me uh, gives it to me as, as a present. He doesn't charge anything, so you get something that uh, an extra uh, for the chair for nothing. So uh, and people really like it. So after I got uh, kind of uh, let's say a bit relaxed with the chair, it came back to me. Now I'm also in, in, into chairs. I'm doing a project. Still has a bit of work to do. It's called Wild Minion in Chairs, and, and we'll see what happens with that. But uh, um, last year I started to look seriously into this uh, 3D printing uh, scenario. And you look at Shapeways and uh, other websites, and you see the uh, the flow, the, the the gushing flow of, of products coming one after the other. Objects uh, mostly bad uh, or not interesting or uh, very few are, have something to say, and I ask myself a question: What would be a critical product that can be 3 d printed, printed? And and I thought about it. It took me like two months uh, to to zoom on to something, and it was these things you see on the screen. These are intrauterine intrauterine devices, IUDs, uh, spirala in, in German, uh, contraceptives, uh, things that uh, these. These things are the most popular um, pregnancy avoiding devices in the world right now. They're, they're uh, enjoying a comeback um, and they're basically uh, very small parts made out of plastic, usually polyethylene, and either you have a, a copper part on them or a hormone part in them that uh, create a spermicidal effect. And, 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 um, when you look at this, you say, well, the production of this is maybe five cents. But when you want to buy these things, then I checked in the United States, it's somewhere between $400 and $850 each. And I went to the corner uh, pharmacy uh, in, in where I live in Berlin, and, and they told me that they want 120 euros for that, for one of these. And uh, I was thinking, here's a good opportunity. And uh, I started thinking about what I want uh, how can I make this thing? And, and it came out. It came out to this. This is uh, an experimental political uh, object in 3D that is a, a pregnancy prevention thing, an intrauterine device. It's called the Berina, and it's designed. First of all, it's designed like a bear uh, to attract the young women because. Uh, Everywhere in the world, when you're 30, when, I mean, when a woman is 30, to put the intrauterine device is okay. But the problem comes when a girl is 14 and gets pregnant. This is the this is the problem. And usually, 14-year-old girls do not have the $400 to put one of these things. And so it's appealing to a, to a younger generation. And it's open design. And you can download it and you can produce it anywhere in the world. And uh, to, just to make a, a point of it about the, the copper part of it, I used the one cent coin uh, as the spermicidal part. The, the, the one cent coin is made out of pure copper plating. I checked that also. And uh, so I, and I pay for it one euro 25, actually one euro 26 with the one cent uh, coin in it. And um, I have it here, it's, it's, it's actually here. And the vision is, uh, that if this is an open design, then maybe women and gynecologists and a pharmaceutical company can come together and develop this kind of thing into a real product. This is only experimental, uh, political, conceptual. Yeah, but it has the seed to become something that is real. Um, and it's also saying something about the disruptive nature of, of 3D printing and open design. And it also is saying something about the dangers of open design, because this could be also um, a dangerous thing to do when you when you put this on the on the net and, and people download it. And I don't know what will happen. I have it. Uh, when you download this from my side, there is a disclaimer. A disclaimer in red: Do not use this. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that somebody will use it. But this is this is my uh, um, uh, 
I'll say my opinion of what can happen. This is this is a part of a of a vision of what open design can do in an, on a global kind of scale. Um, but to to make things lighter, you know, we got into this thing to make things lighter. This is a work from 2010. And, you know, iPhone killer is a is a, is a meme. It says you, you read this word uh, uh, yeah, uh, many many times, and this is uh, something I did, and it became viral in the internet. Um, uh, it's, it's an open design iPhone killer, as is, and uh, it kills iPhones and it, it was like in 100,000 uh, websites in every language possible. I have like 20,000 entries to my website and I actually even sold two to somebody near Redmond, United States, uh, probably uh, as a present for somebody very important, uh, very strange, but anyway. Um, or you have you have the possibility of saying all kinds of things or, or expressing all kinds of things. Like the piggy bank is sometimes uh, my my impression about um, well my sometimes my uh, economic uh, situation, but the economic situation of everybody. I mean, you cannot save anything, and uh, if you have something to save in a piggy bank, you cannot do it anyway. It's not worth it. Um, the reality TV, which is really a reality TV. Um, it shows reality as it is, uh, it's a candle holder, and uh, the, the fake table watch is uh, it's, it's, a, it's a table watch that incorporates a fake Rolex uh, watch as, as, a, as a statement about the relation of fake in our life, and that it's part of our life, I'm embracing it, I'm not, I'm not rejecting it. Um, something you, you may know, the, the Guernica uh, has a lamp in it. Just copied it and made it into a, a lamp, uh, also for download, and, and uh, you can download and produce it. And the flat alto base, the uh, uh, alto base of the Savoy base from '36, lost its um, copyright in 19, in, sorry, in 2006. Uh, and I celebrated it by doing my own version of the, of the alto base that you can just bend and put a glass of water with flowers and you have. Uh, this uh, modernist icon, um, and well, and when you come, and, and I also do, I also teach open design in university. I have to say that students really enjoy it. They really open. They really start to be creative. Really start to uh, ask questions about who they are, what's what's what is their opinion, and so on. And uh, well, I have a lot more to say, but uh, I'm out of time. So. You are welcome to come to my website, download stuff, do whatever you want with it, and uh, it will be a pleasure. And, and that's it. Thank you very much.